Welcome back. In today's episode, we conclude with part two of the interview with Fadi Malouf. He shares some of the best strategies and the best advice he's ever received and some of the worst advice and strategies he's ever received, as well as some of the core beliefs that has made him a true champion. Welcome to this edition of Peak, Peak Performance, Performance Podcast. Podcast with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak performer in any area of your life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done, or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. You figured out how to do it successfully. Along the way, I'm sure you tried some things that were not successful. Tell us some of the advice you were given that you, was really bad advice. You didn't really know it was bad advice at the time, but you actually took it. <laughs> and when it comes to health and fitness? Uh, yes. And then you know, later in the show, I want to talk about uh, the business side as well. Um. Oh, man, it was so many of those. <laughs> All right, so I remember one time driving down to uh, Florida for a, a super body competition. It was a, uh, it was a qualifier for an international show, and it was a drug free competition. And I was advised to drink about six gallons of water to flush out any uh, to flush out any water in the system. Well, I, I, I flushed out some water and, and, and then some and then some. I was uh, I flushed out all my electrolytes as well. <laughs> and it was it was so bad. I mean I was cramping the whole time and um, it was it was just not a good idea to drink six six gallons of water. And mind you, I was driving to Florida from Atlanta. I'm trying to remember where in Florida it was. It might it was in Miami. No? Was it Miami? I can't remember where it was, but nonetheless Try to drink six gallons of water a day, man. And <laughs> that is tough. I do about a gallon and a half a day, and you know, try to get up to two, but six. I don't even know how you would do that. It was stupid. Five or six gallons. It was. It was crazy. But nonetheless, yeah, that was one of the stupid advices that I've taken. Every former has a routine, a morning routine that they follow. What's your morning routine look like? Lately this year, last six, seven months, has been waking up 5.30 to 6.30 in the morning, and I wake up without an alarm clock. I hate waking up with an alarm clock. I like to know if my body's rested or not. If And waking up without an alarm clock well, just allows me to do that. Uh, I started this routine uh, after a trip to New Zealand last year in December. I was helping a client actually get ready for a, uh, an Ironman there. I, I didn't use an alarm clock, I didn't use a phone, I didn't uh, didn't have a watch. I just completely disconnected and unplugged. I wanted to see what my body would do naturally. So my morning routine is I get up and I do my inner size and exercise. I want to go ahead and say what inner size is because a lot of people say, well, what's inner size? Inner size is just like exercising your your physical body. Inner size your your brain. You're working on your brain. Brain is like a computer, and you can reprogram it to think and act differently. But usually, that's the first thing in the morning. I know I've talked a lot about the morning because, but the morning is a very important thing. And for years, for 20 years, I gave my best to my clients. I train clients as early as five o'clock in the morning. And my trip to New Zealand was saying, you know what, I've preached this for 20 years to my clients, put yourself first. So I started taking my own advice in the beginning of 2016 and the first thing I do now in the morning is I exercise, I exercise, I'll take a look at the news, I'll take a look at the trends and see what's happening in the market and I get started in my day at about 8.30, 8.45, my assistant calls me and she gives me the kind of the rundown of what's going on today. We have a little meeting, and then off I go with my my work. And I usually hit the gym about 4.30, 4.45, uh, about three days a week is when I do weights. And um, dinner is like 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at the latest. I eat breakfast around 7.38, and I eat dinner 7.38 tops. And I have this formula that I use for my clients and as well as for myself. It's called Fat Loss Formula 5312. That means five meals a day every three hours and a 12 hour intermittent fast. 
I do sometimes six meals. Um, I've got a, a little more weight on me to, to maintain. Um, nine o'clock, my phone is turned off, and um, usually by ten o'clock, I'm I'm out. I'm I'm asleep. Um, nothing too exciting. <laughs> Well, you know, I find that all peak performers do go to bed early because you can't get up at five o'clock in the morning and be rested if you're going to bed at two in the morning. Right. It just doesn't work. When I started a new project, like when I was working with this medical company, I, there's, I was nonstop. I worked for like ridiculously for like for the first 90 days for, for this company. And until I saw the results that I was looking for, I was not backing off. And I know that about me. And I speak to the team that way. It's like, I'm going to push super hard until we get to our, you know, our mile marker or, or our milestone. And I, I'm very, very intense. Most people have a difficult time being around me. Um, I'm comfortable in change. I'm conf- comfortable in chaos. I put order, order to chaos. And uh, for some for some people that are very, very complacent with their jobs and me coming in there and I'm like a I've, I've been called a, a, a bull in a, in, a, in a China house. I, I just got to make things happen. I am, and, and I'm, but I'm patient. I'll sit, uh, before I start moving things around and adjusting things, I evaluate. I take very good notes and I, I'm very good, meticulous about picking up patterns in a corporation. And then it doesn't take very long for me to sit down and, and present to the owners of the company. It's like, okay, here's where you can make improvements. If you want to see your company's bottom line increase, many times, a lot of times, the CEOs that I work with are like, you know, I've I've known this, but I just have not had the the excuse my French, but the balls to take to execute on it. Sure. Like, yeah. So I was like, well, you will. You got the right person right now to do it with. <laughs> you don't have to be the bad guy. I can. Ex- exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I, I know. It, I know staff and employment is the biggest expense for a company, and uh, I don't, I don't, I don't like losing staff, and, and I don't. I nine out of ten times, uh, we don't lose staff. People don't quit. They actually get encouraged and um, fired up because I, I spend time in training and developing them and finding out what their intrinsic motivation is before I start going in and start moving things and changing things around. And um, so it's more of a cultivating team effort as opposed to me trying to force, force all the staff to, do, to, to think differently overnight. Now, let me ask you this. You've got so many opportunities coming your way. There's only so much time in the day. How do you determine what to say yes to? Uh, My calendar. I've learned really well to stick to my calendar. I've made the mistake of saying yes to a lot of things that didn't match my calendar. Uh, This is why it's, it's crucial to have a very good assistant to go back. Like I have to talk to to my assistant and say, say, okay, what's my capacity? What's our capacity? Most most clinics that I work with or small businesses, like they don't know their capacity, meaning if so, let's say if you have a um, an apartment and you have 100 units and your objective is to have 100% or as close as you can to 100% occupancy to get the most revenue from your from your apartment building, right? So for for instance, when I'm – uh, when I work with the with the health clinic, what's when I ask the CEO, the owner of the company, what's your capacity? Nine out of ten times, they don't know. They don't know how many patients are going in. They don't know how many patients are going out. They don't know how many appointments are being scheduled. They don't know how many patients are being seen and serviced. Um, so how how do you know is based? How do I know is based on the service that I'm providing? I spend half of my day providing service. The other uh, and in my business and what I do as a consultant and providing media services for, for my clients, I'm spending half my, my work hours building somebody else's business. And I go for 10 folds, 10 times the investment with me. So for every dollar you invest with me, I shoot for 10 times. And I, I don't usually do less than, and I calculate it. I don't do less than 4.8. That's, that's my minimum wow. of return. Uh, so for you spend a, you spend a, a, a dollar with me, you're gonna get four and a half, four point eight dollars back, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, I can't, I can't, of course, uh, I can't guarantee any of this, but um, in my efforts of producing ten times the results, 
um, there have been many deals that I've I've positioned myself and I've been able to acquire business because it was off, uh, offered as a guarantee, a personal guarantee. Now I'm known in the health and fitness industry to produce six pack abs, weight loss, uh, and like sustainable weight loss for for a lifetime. Now that moving into the business arena, uh, I'm working on establishing my name just like I I had in, in the health and fitness area. And one of the reasons, one of the ways I'm breaking my my financial plateau is that I I've, my passion has shifted from nutrition and exercise to business development and marketing. That's that's what I truly truly love, and I could do that still within my in, industry as well as the health healthcare industry. And I've got a couple clients that they're like property management and real estate um, and other businesses, but. To answer, go back to answer your question, I'm sorry being long-winded about this, but half of my time I'm building somebody else's business, the other half of the time I'm working on building my own business and how I choose what's going to what's gonna build my business or who I'm going to work with, if it aligns with my core values and um, my final goal for my business. Earlier you told us some of the worst advice you've received. What's some of the best advice you've received? So one of my favorite or best advice I've received was modeling modeling others and their success following somebody else's footsteps and achieving a particular goal um david frost he's 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 a i think he has has gotten like 10 platinums covers i'm not sure if you're familiar with him or not no i'm not uh, it was i listened to him one time in success magazine interview and one of the things they asked him was like how do you stay motivated and he's like if i waited to be motivated I wouldn't have the success that I have. I got up every day, I wrote songs, and I put it, kind of push it under the, the door, and I had to write over, and write, produce, and publish over a thousand songs in order to, to, to be awarded 10 platinums. So you don't wait to be inspired. You just do your work and enjoy it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because you committed to it, and it's your passion. Hey, yeah. you're one of the strongest men that I know. Tell me one of your weaknesses. Delegating, trusting people to do the job correctly and not robbing me. <laughs> I guess trusting people. And when it comes to business, that's, that's a weakness. You mentioned how important accountability is. Who holds you accountable? My coach, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. And I got an executive coach. If you had it to do all over again, what would you do differently or better the second time around? <clears throat> what I would do different is I would have manifested a bigger dream at a younger age and not looked at how much money I'm actually putting in my pocket as opposed to the impact I have on my community and society. So you've really morphed into a very highly sought after executive coach and business coach. Tell us what you're doing in that area now. In that area, I'm providing corporate wellness. For the first time in, in, in a very long time, wellness is larger than pharmaceuticals. And many corporations are looking to find ways to engage with their employees and their customers. And they're using wellness as a vehicle to engage and to energize their staff and their customers to, to buy into their brand, product, or service. So this is a perfect fit for me now more than ever before. This is a huge gap in the market that I get to fill and make a difference in millions of people's lives. If you had the chance to spend an hour with someone dead or alive and ask them anything, who would it be and what would you ask them? I would ask my dad. I would ask him if he was proud of me. We all have core beliefs. What are some of your core beliefs? Well, fitness is one of them. And the way I define fitness is that I'm continuously conditioning and developing my physical fitness, my emotional, my mental, my social, financial, and spiritual. And the way I do that is to continuously engage in one of those areas of my life. And it acts as a domino effect. When you work on your spiritual, it affects your physical and your mental and your emotional and your financial and your uh, social and so forth with every other one. So continuous practice and conditioning is uh, is how I define fitness, and fitness is one of my 
major, major core values. It, it's a big part of my life. Fadi, share with us what your greatest professional success has been. My greatest professional success, I would say, consistently making a six-figure income for over 20 years as a personal trainer. That's not easy as a personal trainer. No, not consistently. <laughs> So that's that's one. The other one is becoming a uh, professional author and speaker despite my learning disabilities. What were the learning disabilities? ADD. And I, I didn't know how to write until my 30s. Wow. I remember. And, and English, was that your first language or secondary language? Second. Well, well done. Thank you. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to go back and speak with the 13-year-old you, what would you tell him? <laughs> uh, I would say three things. Uh, some of the things that I learned about how the brain works, and my mind works, and quite frankly, everybody's mind. Uh, you are the observer of your own mind and have the power to choose how you think and feel. That's one. Second, uh, fun things will make you money as well. One of my dreams was I always loved cars. And I Today, I drive, I like exotic cars, I take them to the track, I like to race, but I never, know. But if somebody told me that I can make money and do something that I love to do, God, I, I think I would be a car, race car driver today. I, would, I, don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if I would be a, to do anything with fitness. <laughs> I love cars. You're talking to a car guy, so I'm with you. I love cars. I mean, it, it really excites me. I love cars. I love being in them. I love driving them. They, it's a, it's a rush. So that's the second thing. Uh, fun things will make you money as well. So doing what you love to do. And finally, the third thing I would do is um, abide by a set of values and principles. That's, they don't teach values and principles in school. Mm, so true. So true. Yeah. They're, they're timeless. So tell Peak Performance Nation how they can get a hold of you and a little bit more about what you're doing and how they can get more information about you, your book, and everything that you're doing and uh, your book. Sure, Thor. So I'm easy to reach. You can go visit FadiMalouf.com and on the first page, you can schedule a 15-minute discovery with me. You have access to my calendar where we can have a, a brief conversation about any business opportunities uh, regarding your corporations, small to mid-sized businesses that need help with marketing, business consulting, corporate wellness. Those are the type of services that I provide for my clients, as well as if you're, a, let's say, a, a coach yourself, a personal trainer, a nutritionist that want to expand and build on your uh, business, I can also help you with that. This is something I've done consistently for a very long time. If you're passionate about health and fitness and helping other people and, and growing your business, I can also assist you with that. You can also uh, purchase my book, Strong Than You Fit, on Amazon.com. And uh, if uh, you have any kind of media presence, uh, an event, or you're looking for a public speaker or, or uh, somebody to do a workshop for you, you can also at fightingmaloof.com fill out a profile, tell me about, a little about your event or the audience that, that's going to be there. And just a brief overview, I'd be more than happy to contact you and to discuss details. Awesome. Fadi, what parting advice do you have for our listeners? Focus on one thing. Do it better than anybody else. Doesn't get any better than that. Thank you so much for your time today. I know the listeners are going to get so much out of today's broadcast and look forward to having you back on the show. Thank you so much, Thor. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun today. You have a great one. Great. Thank you. Being a peak performer is all about execution. Think of those people that you know that you consider peak performers. Some have had great plans. Some are really smart. Some just have natural talent, and others are highly educated. But the one thing that they all have in common, and I don't even know who you're thinking about, they all know how to execute. If they can't execute, they would not be considered a peak performer. Everybody has dreams, but peak performers actually execute them. This applies on the field, in athletics, or in the boardroom. If you're a business owner, a coach, an entrepreneur, or a corporate executive, and you're frustrated and tired of knowing what to do, but you just can't seem to get it all done, or your results are inconsistent, or maybe you're really good at execution, but your team doesn't know how to execute. Are you missing budget? Are you working 80 hours a week 
and it seems like you're just banging your head up against the wall every day? I know I've been there. Are you not making the kind of money that you want and deserve? I have a program that just might be the answer for you. This program is not for everyone. We go deep, we get raw, we get real. But if you're truly committed to mastering execution and for the first time truly being able to execute on what you know as opposed to just trying to figure out more information and looking for that secret, we will teach you to become a master of execution. We'll teach you the science of getting things done. Simply take your phone and text the word BE Summit, one word to 41411. That's Business Execution Summit. The keyword BE Summit, that's what you text, and text it to 41411. Remember, it's not what you know, it's not even who you know, it's about what you're able to execute. That's what truly matters. Don't let another month, another quarter, or another year slip by with just average results. Text today. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already done so, please head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Also, please share this with family, friends, coworkers, or anyone that could benefit from this information. To make it very easy to share these episodes, simply go to my Facebook page, Thor Conklin, Click on the episode that you want to share, and you can post it to your timeline. You just might be helping one of your friends on Facebook by sharing it on your page. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Thor Conklin. The website is thorconklin.com. The email is info at Thor Conklin. While at the website, please sign up for our weekly newsletter with additional tricks, tips, tools, and psychology on how to be a peak performer. Remember, these episodes are anywhere between 6 and 35 minutes and are meant to be consumed during dot time doing other things. Until tomorrow, have an absolutely amazing day.